Good morning, everyone, and happy Easter, April 12th, 2020. About 12 to 14 days ago, I made my first mask to protect myself against the coronavirus. I thought um, I knew how to sew because I had been sewing leather and making dog leashes for a couple of years. And uh, my mother taught me to sew when I was a kid. <clears throat> so I dusted off um, her old sewing machine and I went to work. I posted some pictures of those first masks that I made for myself and, and for my family. Uh, posted pictures on Facebook immediately people started asking me for masks if I could make them masks and so I agreed and uh, I was going to Joanne Fabrics and buying a yard two yards of fabric like all the other people that were in the store we had no idea how uh, big this thing would become um, how uh, exponentially large the demand for masks would be we were just trying to protect ourselves um, within the last 12 days it has become clear that everyone in America needs a mask and there's nowhere to buy masks the only people that are making masks for the general public are the artists sewers crafts people seamstresses tailors um, individual entrepreneurs there are a few companies that are making limited quantities, but the demand um, is, is exponentially great. And um, I need people to please understand that when you uh, sign up to buy a mask from me or another uh, individual maker, crafter, person, you are getting in a very long line that is getting exponentially longer. If you wait, the delay for masks will be much greater. If you get in line now, the wait for getting a mask is already um, quite long. I am doing everything I can to hire people who want to sew, people who want to work, but it is not easy to find people like that. Um, there are people who like to sew, there are people who want to learn to sew, um, but you know, I have tried working with a few of those folks and um, it, it generally doesn't work out. I need people who want to sew, people who know how to sew, people who know how to maintain, who own a, a sewing machine and know how to maintain it and keep it running, um, and people who are willing to do piecework. Um, independent contractor piecework. Um, if you are that person, contact me, especially if you are in the St. Paul, Minneapolis area. It will be much easier to work with you and get you materials um, to work with. Um, if you are um, out of state, um, we can talk about it, but it, it might not be practical to be mailing um, supplies and masks back and forth. It depends on, on what you can do. Um, small quantities mailed out of state will not be practical. If you can do large quantities, very large quantities, um, then we can talk. Um, I'm doing everything I can. I have been working 12 to 14 hour days for the last 12 days. I will continue to work at this pace as long as I can, as long as I'm healthy as long as I'm able to get supplies, which uh, I don't have a real big concern about, but um, I know there are concerns about shortages. Uh, but right now, um, all of the fabric patterns are in extremely limited quantity. If you think that you are picking out a particular pattern uh, for your mask, you might be disappointed. Uh, I will be working on getting larger quantities of the patterns um, very soon, but right now we're in an emergency state. We're in a crisis state. It is like triage. We rush to the fabric store. We buy as much fabric as we can afford or think that we need, which has only been a few yards at a time um, up until now I'm realizing 
that um, the need is, is much, much greater. Um, and I will be looking at buying um, wholesale fabric uh, by the bolt very soon. Um, that that's one bottleneck to the whole process. The next bottleneck is just finding enough people who want to sew, people who are fast and efficient and willing to work hard and long days, um, or, or even just part-time, but to work hard and be efficient. This is very important. Um, there are other bottlenecks to the process, which I am working out. Um, thank you to Elaine Harris for building the order form for me. Orders are flowing in very, very rapidly. If you have not placed an order with me or someone else, you may want to do that very, very soon because the lines are getting longer and longer. Um, this is not click and ship. This is not Amazon or Zappos. Um, we don't have stockpiles of masks. We are making them to order. Um, we didn't see this coming. We got blindsided. We are making masks to order and we're doing the best we can. And, and the most that we need from you is your greatest amount of patience. And when you get your mask, if your mask um, frays, if a seam comes apart, if a wire pops off, I need you to repair it yourself. I do not have time to take returns or do repairs. I just don't. There are too many masks to build. There are too many people to protect. Um, the majority of my customers have uh, pre-existing um, conditions that put them in a very high risk category. Um, so if you can glue your mask back together, if you can stitch your mask back together, if it fails, I don't expect the stitching to fail, but I know the early masks, some of the nose bridge wires probably will come off. Because of the glue that I was using, I'm trying to improve that. Um, you know, we're, do, we're trying to do continuous improvement on these masks um, as we work at a furious pace. It's an extremely challenging problem. I am up to the task. I'm willing to do the work. I want you all to be healthy and safe. And, um,